Welcome back, um, Maxim Grunin at Maxim Grunin Art. Uh, really happy to be here with you. Thanks for joining me. Uh, let's have fun drawing. Let's participate. Um, let's increase our skill level by um, getting really engaged and uh, inspired and excited and just drawing a bunch of sketches. So this is uh, an exercise. Mm, it could be good for warm up. It could be good for creative search. This uh, kind of activity promotes um, skill upgrade and uh, personal growth. I am looking at human head, face. I often draw various subjects and uh, more frequently I do lots of sketches of female heads. Mm, I find there is something uh, relaxing, calming and mm, I, I keeps me interested and um, yeah, so pick subject of your choice or even better follow in my lead and uh, you see ballpoint pen drawing ballpoint pen just a regular old drawing I mean writing tool mm, it is uh, such a, a readily available mm, handy usual uh, object what a like an ordinary ballpoint pen I have lots of familiarity with it mm, I like holding it I like uh, scratching the paper with the pen so I am likely to mm, be um, engaged and be familiar with just just drawing with it I choose um, like a magazine photo or um, on something on my computer and sometimes even you know, sketching friends works just the same yeah in this case I'm looking at a photo and I deliberately um, I start out with light pencil lines. The, the pencil is serving a role of just like really lightly mapping things out. Mm, ballpoint pen is not erasable and it's not like there's much erasing happening here but it's kind of nice for me to see faint lines of the what in general is going to be happening. It's like a, a placement area, like a map, mapping out of just a major uh, form of the subject that I will be now drawing into. Uh, it is important to, for the method that I'm using, I learned this over time and I had uh, lots of schooling and uh, I really tune into classical art. Uh, the key is uh, not to go too chaotic into just drawing whatever I want 
but to actually create a cohesive um, a structure behind the modalities in which I work it's it really it really amounts uh, towards efficiency so um, drawing starting so to draw an image involves uh, quickly mapping out the form the the most the biggest form of it it's like if it's a head then i would find whether you know which or at what angle the head is tilted and then i would include the mass the area of the hair uh, the neck very quickly very roughly just to have this big um, shape ready to go to start chiseling smaller information out of and then so once I have this quick pencil um, um, drawing like a little map of where things are roughly located then I can I can almost see the drawing even before it is made so I'm following with my observation I'm looking at the photograph of the mm, image that I'm wanting to sketch roughly with the with my basic sketching tools and I am following the let's say the contour of the face the forehead down to the nose down to the line of the lips the chin curve under all the way around mark the ear refine continue uh, introducing um, like a complexity so from really general I am moving um, carefully yet this is kind of a swift process where I'm not trying to finish anything at any point other than when all of the things kind of balance out together closer towards like I don't know 10 minute mark by the end of uh, one of these sketches I can maybe go into some details and spend longer there and darken or reshape or introduce even smaller features but all the way through before the end stay um, general not to to cut up in on one area in one area or another spread the effort kind of evenly throughout the drawing so once I look at the nose I can see where the outline of the nose makes changes like the let's say forehead the cuts in and then there is the nose starts to protrude out so stay I am staying um, a bit slow a bit true to what the contour of the nose or any other object is telling me I am not really making too much of this up I am staying fairly close to okay let's observe more and make up stuff less because if I rely on finding the form from observation I am a lot likely to balance all of these proportions uh, in, a, in a satisfying way mm, how far are objects uh, from one another um, 
if I take a measurement of the forehead and measure it to the nose is it similar or is it shorter or longer uh, how about the curvature of the lips how about so mm, observation and then trying to carefully and slowly translate it to the drawing without trying to finish anything and then do a little bit i'm doing a little bit of work i'm putting a little bit of effort and then i'm pausing to look and go back to next area move to the next area take a quick look move to the next area little baby steps of following what the observation is gathering for me it is actually uh, an important skill in the method that I use to draw or paint is being able to measure out with my eyes how much uh, form to introduce here less more what's the angle of this where is uh, this object located in relationship to the left to the right to the top to the bottom next uh, general um, strategy is to also introduce some shading so a little bit of light and dark tone is a good idea uh, let's say if I if the face or if the object is lighter then I could uh, draw it out but then I can also shade towards the background or towards the hair to set up an area of darker tone beside the lighter object and then I can I can even uh, trim things with that background you see me often mm, cut like the nose back a little bit with the shadow and so yeah uh, it's it's almost good to leave and keep everything a little bit more chunky a little bit more exaggerated so that we can actually uh, cut the, all of that back and then uh, what else what else mm, I recommend spending time with your sketchbook and just drawing different features of the face almost like separately how important is it to know how to draw and a good eye at any different angle how nice is the knowledge to have under my belt about the anatomy of the nose how are the lips built as as a you know geometric and uh, geometric forms and uh, anatomical forms how or an ear it took me many years actually to to get to the point where I can do you know an okay ear ear and I can kind of you know, all these fe features they they also need to kind of go together so to have consistent continuous kind of style thing so if you, you know all of this is uh, adjusting an experience um it is a, a good idea to layer the shading uh, lightly at first and go over the light layers slightly across and in a descriptive way like weaving the lines 
on an angle of the form let's say if the side of the face would go more diagonally downwards and then what else and like uh, under the nose area would be deliberately more horizontal and cut in and uh, with the ballpoint pen I noticed that sometimes it's uh, nice to wipe the the pen just so that uh, it builds up the ink or the pigment kind of builds up and it could produce like a, a smudge or like a bigger stain so just to keep an eye on um, what what shape your drawing tool is in when I learned to draw and when I learned about the human anatomy I uh, I got the general knowledge and also I noticed that my personal strength is not to make like per se portraits of people for likeness so i never really liked that job it it's a uh, you know let's say to draw my own portrait which is called a self portrait because you know myself is being drawn by me so it's a self portrait like a selfie <clears throat> i'm doing it myself and it's of me self portrait and uh, or a portrait of uh, my mom or my dad or re uh, relatives whoever you know i didn't like that job i thought i want to draw characters for fairy tales like uh, adventure and mystery characters or um, so that appealed to me a lot more so my uh, human head or human face drawings they are rarely trying like I'm rarely trying to make the person look like like it's them this is not my specialty and it's quite all right uh, but however some uh, each person each artist each person has their own set of gifts so if you are uh, really keen on spotting the likeness and if you have a, a knack for it that's really good pursue that it's a wonderful ability to have and um, you, you can do a lot with that so you know get get the techniques get the basics understand how to get things started and how to create consistent a consistent drawing and then apply your wonderful gift of uh, having portrait likeness to it and then oh my god the, the students of mine who have that ability I really admire it and I promote it each person would have a different ability and uh, mine is to know uh, and uh, be able to demonstrate a lot of different uh, things in when it comes to like drawing and painting studio practice I, I love doing everything and uh, I like uh, expressive and imaginative uh, content so I focus often on landscape or imaginary landscape in my work and in drawing I explore absolutely everything and I do the exercises and I mm, investigate and learn how to and then I try to practice that all the time or you know, all the time like 
uh, enough like a lot so a good amount of um, practice for this craft for drawing would be uh, roughly four hours a day if you can sit and do four hours a day of work you will be uh, really skyrocketing with the skill set as a drawer and combine it with you know self-education or formal education or online education or even just getting tips and tricks from someone like me and you and then just invest time and anyone who wants to learn how to draw will ex, uh, excel if they put in the time so four hours uh, a day every day maybe with one day off that's a really good amount but even less would work and i i recommend anywhere between 10 to 15 pages of uh, sketching and drawing in your sketchbook or on spare sheets um, just per week 10 to 15 pages that's a minimum and uh, to those who love to draw that's a uh, that's very little actually I could sit down and do 10 pages in in like under an hour and then I'm just getting warmed up to do the next 10 and that's all in one day <laughs> well uh, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time welcome